Some of you may have figured it would have known that. Hey, good evening, folks. I'm sorry for the late start. Uh, I, of course, am your humble, happy host, Bill Silby, a.k.a. the Dungeon Delver. Kyle will be along shortly. This is actually, this is an early start for him um, rather than a late start. But for me, it's a late start because I said I was going to start at a certain time that uh, is not, um, is, is not, uh, As usual, uh, my, my usual thing. So anyway, here I am. Uh, I just wanted to catch you guys up on some odds and ends that are going on. Um, if you missed last night's show, uh, thank you, Dungeon Minister. Those are actually, the, those opening credits are the work of Kyle. Anyway, if you missed the show last night, there there are some some things going on right now. Uh, some personal matters that are rising up. Basically, we're going to have a normal run of shows insofar as anything around here is normal until Tuesday of next week. And then... Uh, there will be a pause. I don't know. Summer rerun period. Call it what you will. For about a week. Um, there's something going on. We've anticipated it. It is a good thing, but it is also a stressful thing that is happening around these parts. So it will keep me tied up for the back half of next week into the front half of the following week. Um I'll still try and interact on the Discord and uh, chat with you guys and so on, but that there are matters that will require my attention uh, a bit more fully. Um, Mrs. The Dungeon Delver has a surgery coming up, uh, and a lot of people are like, oh, well, you know, what kind and how severe and that sort of thing. It's not degrees of severity to me surgery just freaks me out and worries me and i want to be there with her and you know but then there's the house and what you know are things going to get taken care of and it just it stresses me a little bit um but that is that is currently the game plan Unless something major changes, because you know how it is. If you've if you've had any kind of surgery, it's like, you know, a consultation, then a pre-op consultation, then a consultation with a surgeon, and then just bip 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 bip. You know, it's like, I uh, it's it's easier to ratify a nuclear treaty between two countries. So, uh, in between the knees bent, running about between now and the end of this week, and next week uh, the show will go on per normal but then wednesday thursday friday and very likely monday tuesday possibly wednesday of next week uh we will just be focused on the home front so i just wanted to let you guys know that 
now as far as 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 far as uh content for the show um you know the 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 deep dives the 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 product deep dives i just wanted to say i was thinking about this earlier this evening um There's st there's a lot of content here, but at the same time, to me, I mean, the primary thing, and I don't want to sound nasty about it, but I mean, my jam is first and foremost any flavor of classic D and D that you can't just walk into. Uh, I almost said Walden Books, um, Barnes and Noble bookstore, and buy right, you know. O D and D, A D and D, basic Dungeons and Dragons of various stripes, and there's not a crap ton of that stuff. Now, there's there are things that we're going to talk about, like uh, you know, I don't think we've ever talked about done a deep dive in uh, about Star Frontiers, for example. Um, and I know some people who know a bit about the production of that. And we have lots of Star Frontiers to talk about. Uh, but I mean, we, we could honestly even deep dive cover probably two or three of the, um, the Steve Jackson click box games a night. Because I don't know what the lineage of kung fu 2100 is and i don't think anybody cares uh, so it's it's more you know it's more important to me quality is more important than quantity and i don't want to go back and look in my list of videos and go oh that's when i farted around and tried to stretch like literally a five minute discussion of kung fu 2100 out into 59 minutes of video. So a lot of this stuff will be kind of compressed down. And then uh, there's other stuff which will be, uh, you know, we'll have multiple chapters of uh, West End Games Star Wars, for example, because we have the Star Wars Starter Adventure set. We have the core rule books. And somewhere knocking around in boxes, I've got like the second edition. I think I've got the corporate sector source book around here somewhere. I don't know. We'll have to see. But the point is, I've got all this stuff yet to go through and yet to look at. And it's, it's going to happen. So just, just, you know, bear with as we, as we kind of explore all of these, these boxes and books and whatnot. Um, and I may stop doing like, oh, I'm just going to dig through this and show you, oh, we'll talk about this someday. And we'll talk about this someday. And we'll talk about this someday. Uh, I will very likely just start surprising like, Oh, tonight, you know, and you'll see in the description tonight from the vaults of volcano God, you know, uh, uh mech warrior, the role playing game. Um, so it's, it's just, it's just going to depend a lot on, on where I find myself as far as content goes. Now, uh, one other announcement that I, I do want to make is I had planned before this window opened where we could get uh, the Mrs. Her things going on, Mrs. The Dungeon Delver uh, taken care of, as it were, um, was to have Alan Hammock on the show and deep dive into Ghost Tower of Inverness. That's still going to happen. We're still going to deep dive Ghost Tower of Inverness. Um, it's just it's it's just going to be uh, a little bit longer because 
my plan was to have him on actually like next week. Well, next week's not going to happen. Um, I mean, next week's going to happen. No, 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 no. I don't have a doomsday device pointed at the earth or anything. Next week is going to happen. Next week's shows at the time when I could have a guest on are not going to happen unless he wants to do Monday night, which maybe, you know what? I'll talk to him. I'll see if he's available for Monday night. You guys talked me into it. Okay. I give up. I give up. Dungeon Minister, did you ever see the sci-fi horror movie, The End of the World, starring Christopher Lee? It's like a late 1970s movie. And like he and his allies in, in there, he's the bad guy. They're like setting into motion all these calamities, destroying the earth. Um, and like a scientist and a reporter, because it's always a scientist and a reporter, find out what he's doing and that they're like actually lizard people. It's, it's a trip scared the hell out of me when I was a kid, but, but anyway, so that's enough blather from me. Let's, let's hear some blather from, uh, my co-host and let him talk tonight. Everybody say hello to Kyle. She Kyle. How are you? Hey boys and girls. You started early again. Well, I, I had I had some things I wanted to I, I wanted to get out of the way. Otherwise, we would have started promptly. We've got a few things that I'm I'm sure I've, I've made you aware of, and if I haven't, well, I will forthwith. We'll so, um, and of course, we have Tonka Todd here with us. Let's do that. That's a little friendlier looking, unless you want a different layout, Kyle. You call that picture friendly looking? Look at that big hairy thing. I'm, I'm talking about Kyle. <laughs> Leave the jokes to the professional, Todd. Um, I don't know where that professional is. He's not on this show. I'm just saying, leave, leave the leave the jokes to the professional. Um, but anyway, so uh, once again, boys and girls, we are in the. Um, we are in the bowels of a spaceship buried in the deserts of the... Are they deserts or savannas, Kyle? Are they more deserts well, or savannas? It's, a, it's an arid, rocky, rocky region. So I think around... Um, you know, it, it's what they film a lot of American movies in, out in the, you know, a highway of Colorado or something. You know, ah, or, or right. Colorado. So like a monument park kind of thing. I gotcha. I gotcha. So we're in the bowels of this ship that's been buried in the sands probably... I missed the intro sequence. I think we should see it again. Well, okay, really, so you need your intro sequence for your bladder, and we need my intro sequence for my bladder. Like goes with like. Like 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 goes with like, and I did. I I played the old one because I got the files and stuff's been going on, and I hadn't put, I, I hadn't edited the video together, and I apologize for that. You don't have to. You've got mine. So it's there. it's just it's just yeah. it's just one void video. Intro. It's the void intro, episode one point oh three. Oh, I thought those. Oh my gosh! Well, my face is red. Well, actually, my face is is pale and blotchy. But metaphorically, my face is red because I thought you were sending. Fine, Todd. Well, was anyway. sending just in case it didn't work or something. So it's like okay. here's mine, and if mine didn't work. You can put it together. So for those who don't know, if you want to edit a movie um, together from a bunch of different clips, there's some software which is free or cheap. I can't remember because I got it years ago called uh, Wondershare Filmora. Um, but it requires a laptop that's under 10 years old, which <laughs> yeah, um, you, you need a little bit of uh, power. Not, you don't need a huge amount of power, but you need a little bit of power because you're doing audio. So you can take little clips and you can put them together. So if you've got copies of other people's movies or your own, other people's audio or your own, you can kind of mash it together into a thing. Uh, and if you're really fussy, you can edit it. And it's relatively user-friendly. I'm a, I'm an electronics idiot, and I can still handle it. Um, but, uh, yeah, you need a certain amount of processing power uh, to put it together. And sometimes an old laptop, 
laptop like mine struggles, but uh, Bill's got some fancier gear. So uh, I shared the, the whole f folder with all the little clips and everything with him so he could put it together himself if he wanted, but there was also mine that I, that I put right. in. So this well, is the episode intro, or should be the episode intro. Well, I mean, what what I have is what we what we ran for opening credits last time, so I don't I, I don't know that I have the right thing. Um, okay, wait one then. I'll put mine. I mean, see. mine up and let's see how we go. Yay! And what I what I actually ran were the uh, then were the 1.0 credits, and I apologize for that. I'm a little discombobulated lately, and and I sincerely apologize for that. So we'll synchronize a bit better in the future. Yeah, that was the sound work for that. Because I didn't hear that anything. was fancy. I love that. It, it was. It was quite like nice. <laughs> I do. I That's thought exactly he looked like a big guy. I him in my mind. I thought he looked like a big guy with lots of strength and no endurance. <laughs> thought he looked like that. Yeah, odd. I couldn't get the the sound when I played it, but anyway, as long as you guys got it, and it, it was it so, was pretty nice. Yeah. So. Um, uh, yeah, here you are out in the wilderness outside uh, Border Town. About half a day's drive outside Border Town. More or less in the nomad lands. All the rocks, enough rocks have been uh, clawed away from it. And there's a, a, a spacecraft that at some point has uh, landed or crashed on its side. Almost all spacecraft are uh, tail sitters. In this because there's no artificial gravity in that. Mm -hmm. uh, and so ones that want to do a horizontal takeoff or landing require an atmosphere. Um, <coughs> so uh, starships tend to be tail sitters or they just go into a spaceport around orbit and then uh, they send shuttles back and forth. But anyway, so this one's this one was obviously meant to be sitting on its tail, but it's lying on its side. And uh, it was buried whether by the passage of time or uh, deliberately in uh, a hole in the ground and uh, you guys have dug inside it or rather you know dug away enough to get it to get in and you've dug inside it and explored rather tentatively through it um and uh yeah explored rather tentatively through it and 
found uh, you know you found the uh, the main deck and all the rest you also found a couple of guys in cold sleep so there were four cold sleep tubes all together and two of them were occupied by guys in orange jumpsuits you found a deceased spacer who was uh, in, a, in a vac suit and um, some, it looked like some cargo had fallen over him, perhaps during the crash or at some other time. And um, yeah, and uh, your Chikal, who invited you to come and find and, and dig up this spacecraft, saying that she was an archaeologist. Uh, she stood by the switch of the cold sleep tubes to turn them on and off. Because though the, the general power had gone on and off, the cold sleep tubes have got an emergency power source to keep them going. Uh, for the very reason that if a ship is disabled, crew can then jump in the cold sleep tubes and they've got a, a much better chance of survival uh, if the ship is later picked up. Very much like um, the end of Alien, or the beginning of Aliens, where uh, Ripley has jumped in there. And so, you know, for a, a, a escape pod to drift into the, the space lanes in the next several mm -hmm. weeks and of course it takes longer than several weeks but there we go um yeah so they've got their own little power source but that can also be turned on and off uh and the alcohol just says hold it because if the power is on it's a mission if the power is off it's now a salvage mission and Tunker wasn't very impressed by that, or Bubble wasn't very impressed by that, so he pointed his pistol at the woman. And uh, reading some harsh words. Yeah. Uh, and um, that's where we left it. All right, lady. This is how it's going to be. I don't, I don't really cotton to summarily killing people. Um, you might be thinking in this millisecond here, well, I'll just turn it off and then the, the, the question is settled. Um, if you murder these two people, I'll kill you right where you stand. The last thing you do as an alive person will be to pull that switch. That's what's going to happen. If you take your hand off and step back, and we'll talk about this like reasonable people, that's fine. But if you get cute and shut the and shut the tubes off while we're while I'm telling you this, you will cease to be. Now, when I, the last thing I'm going to say of of my uh, proposal to you here is to count to three. At three, if your hand isn't off the switch and you aren't stepping away from it, same outcome. So. <laughs> Well, at the moment you're not pointing a pistol at her, but Bubba is. Bubba so, is. Uh, she just kind of oh. she just kind of glances at Bubba. <laughs> so, so what's um, Bubba, what what are you doing, Bubba? I'm just giving her the stare that you know. I, I'm just going to look at her and say, "Look, you pull that switch, you just become a two-legged deer in my book." And nobody cried when Bambi dies. <laughs> so Fair. he's uh i i glance i just quickly glance over at bubba and then back at her but i say bubba do you understand the terms that i've explained to this lady she removes her hand she lives she don't so i gets to shoot her in the face essentially so here we go uh, this is not difficult math. You don't need a. She takes her hand off the. She takes her hand off the switch. Thank you so much. You Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Okay, so now that we've decided we're not going to kill the people in the cold sleep tubes, and you're not going to get yeeted either, um, why don't you sit down over there on that on that uh, uh, shipping cylinder, and we're going to sort this out. She says, I think you want to open those tubes. 
I'm sorry, uh, GM, you you chopped up a little bit there. What would you say? She says to you, I don't think you want to open those tubes. You think I want to open these tubes? Um, no, I don't think well, you do. Okay. She said, but number I'm not one, if you're concerned about health, having unqualified people open tube is a fair chance of their death. Mm -hmm. Number two, they're not dressed as ordinary civilians. No, I understand that. I just, I, I understand that. I'm just not going to roll up on a couple of people without having a complete picture and switch off their life support. And I'm not going to let you do it either. I'm the closest thing there is to actual authority in this situation. And I'm a civilian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you've you've just done uh, you've just done uh, a couple of decades worth, or yeah, yeah, a couple of decades worth, four terms, sixteen years uh, of uh, being the guy in authority, being a naval officer. So you you're talking to people, and they do as they tell you, right? So anyway, um, opening the tubes, not opening the tubes. But let's discuss this like rational people. Um, Bubba, keep your firearm on well, the nice lady. There's but, still um, moving. There's still other parts of the ship to explore. Of course. Um, is is uh is is my buddy Banjo with us? I think ben, Banjo. Yeah, yeah, Banjo's with you. Yeah. Uh, Banjo, why don't you make your way forward and uh, stand by the airlock? We do have a campsite out there. If any nomads come roaming by and decide that this is their holy spaceship. We'd like, we'd like to be able to clean up a little bit before visitors set foot on board. Sound good? <laughs> and and I, 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 I never take my eyes or my gun off Dr. Lady. And I say, hey, Banjo, stop by and check out that corpse. See what kind of uniform they're wearing inside that vac suit. Good idea. And then radio me. Okay, so Banjo, he... he um, here, yeah. to the payload, let's have a look. All right, so I'll just share the screen you got so that you can see. Um, It's trying. It's, all wet. it's trying. <laughs> Let me see if I can. Nope. <laughs> You've just removed it from the shit. Oh, crap. Sorry. Yeah. No. There we go. So that's that's an overall uh, view of the ship. So uh, a view from the top is on the right. Three fins and a view from the side is on the uh, left. And of course, at the moment, it's actually on its side. Okay. So that's um, that's an overview of the ship. So there's the uh, there's a keel. Number two is the avionics array. Number three is the air airlock deck. Number four is the payload bay that you've already gone through. Number five is the support deck. 
number six is the main deck seven is the power deck eight is the um fusion reactor it's mislabeled it's mislabeled but you'll get to that and then nine is a water tank and okay. there are hydrogen and helium three tanks as well and, and oxygen tanks in the way okay so so your water is reaction mass right yeah yeah reaction mass and you also use it uh, you electrolyze the water to get oxygen and to get hydrogen okay okay so payload bay you so you have been through all right so that's the overview and then you have been through the airlock deck and the power deck oh so uh, it's the lowest deck it can be pressurized here. Sorry, I haven't been through it. It's been through the power, payload bay support deck. Uh, vac suit maintenance robot storage lockers. Two storage lockers here. One contains two vac suits, and the other is a power loader. You've been through there. And personnel um, airlocks. That's where you found that there was a missing vac suit. And the main deck. Ah, oh, yes, you're, you're currently on the main deck. Okay, so that's that room number three that's labeled there as a conference room. On this version of the ship is actually uh, a, a room with the cold sleep tubes. Okay, and uh, yeah, so below that will be the power deck. So you can see there what part of the ship you're in and below that will be the power deck the power deck will be important to you this is the lowest deck on the Heinlein class that can be pressurized offers the only direct access to the rocket's main laser batteries propellant tanks and the jump drive assemblies it also okay. allows maintenance robots to reach the steam turbines and the exterior of the reactor core itself this deck can become irradiated in some types of emergencies. As a safety measure, the spacecraft's hydrogen tanks can be vented into the reactor area in case of um, reactor leakage. So you will know from the design of the ship, being a Navy guy, this mm -hmm. thing will have a fission reactor and it's liquid metal fueled, uh, not liquid metal fueled, but liquid metal cooled reactor, sodium right. potassium. Uh, and since con uh, yeah, it can be flooded with hydrogen since contact with water or oxygen would be explosive. Um, so what happens is that the uh, it's, it's fission reactor, fission rods in there, and the, the sodium potassium mix is a coolant for the reactor, but there's water around the reactor that gets heated to steam, and then that drives the turbines that make the electricity. Um, but then in case of the um, and that all that makes the electricity, but it also produces the the uh, rail gun that fires the little fusion pellets back into the exhaust to give you the fusion drive. So there's no fusion that happens on board the ship; it happens outside the ship to drive it along. It's a it, it's a sort of a mini rapid fusion version of uh, like the Horizon Drive dropping nuclear bombs behind you. So it's um yeah, but you've got the uh, reactor there. Now, the good thing about the uh, liquid sodium uh, fission reactors is that they can be kept at sort of humming along at a low temperature because the sodium and the potassium only actually freeze into solids at like minus 11 centigrade or something. So uh, they can be kept humming along for a long time at low power and it can be a century or more before you have to pull it apart and take the fuel rods out and stuff. Nice. what's the problem with the way I say potassium? I think he just likes it. <laughs> <laughs> I like what like when I was reading bits out of the dungeon. Like when I was reading bits out of the Dungeon Master's Guide. <laughs> like <laughs> the <Australian> thing. <laughs> I, I okay, like so, what um, Robert Phillips said. He said, they belong in a museum, Dr. Lady. <laughs> <laughs> 
Dr. Crimson, if you if you like if you like the way he says potassium, you're going to go absolutely bananas when he says aluminum. But anyway, um, okay. So you so you know what will be on the power deck, but you haven't gone onto it. Um, what is happening on the power deck will be crucial to knowing what's happening or going to happen on the rest of the ship in future, because you know is the reactor working or has all the metal solidified in it um has it leaked a bunch of radiation uh, or has it just yeah has died um and so on so it will, it will tell you whether the ship is salvageable and might also tell you what happened to the ship to uh, make it crash because you don't see anything obvious so far okay um how as we, as we've advanced and I've cracked hatches and thrown the uh, the badge on the string, the rad badge on the string in and pulled it back. How's it been looking? It's been looking fine so far. You haven't okay. yet cracked open the hatch to the power deck, though. That's yeah. That that that's our next uh, our next mission. Um, and yes, I just want to say real quick, let me just slide this in here. Uh, yes, everybody go subscribe to Dungeon Minister on YouTube if you like. Uh, classic, basic expert Dungeons & Dragons is a fantastic channel. Go subscribe right now. That's your homework. He's got 915. Let's boost him to 1,000, folks. Okay. Uh, well, I think we need to check out the power plant. Before we go any further... Did you just come here to to the doctor lady? Did you just come here on a hunch? Or did you know about this? And is there anything, if you do know about it, I'm not judging. Is there anything useful you'd like to tell us before we open the hatch to the power plant? She said... Or power control, rather. I told you the truth. I've been looking for this place for a few years now. Or looking for this thing right. for a few years. Alrighty, that's that's fine. That's um. Why have you been looking for this particular craft, there, Doctor Lady? Dodge, he says. Yeah, Bubba. This it, 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 the, even pulled apart for stuff like the reactor. I'm not even sure what's in all the crates. I mean, you, you could be looking at a cool eight figures here. Easy. I get the lure. I, I get the lure. It's I'm not I'm not judging. I just I'm not going to kill random people. Captain, are you saying we're rich? Let's not count any chickens before they hatch, Bubba. And speaking of hatches, uh, if you'd be so kind. Who are you entering towards? Uh, I'm just pointing at the hatch. Like, we're all moving that way. If, if you'd be so kind, let's... Uh, yeah, well, uh, to get towards the hatch, you actually have to climb up. You have to clamber up. Because remember, ah, okay. this thing is on its side. Right? Okay, so it will... I will clamor up. There's a conference room. So you, I mean, there's enough stuff because there's the furniture tends to be fixed into the deck mm -hmm. for obvious reasons, uh, and then another other stuff is stowed away during zero g. Um, yeah, you have to kind of clamber up, and then you can get through, and then uh, into that where it says four, get through into that area, and then um, make your way down. Okay, um, we'll clamber up. Well, sorry, and I'll just sorry. That's the power. That's okay. We'll clamber up. I'll undog the hatch and throw the you know crack the hatch just enough to throw the uh, the fishing line in, staying okay, out of so direct. You, you 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 touch the hatch. The um the the wheel is okay, but the uh, the actual um the the door part of the hatch the actual body of the hatch is very slightly warm now each hatch that you've opened so far there was a little hiss when you did so because 
this ship appears to have been pressurized to one standard atmosphere and you have about mm-hmm. half a standard atmosphere outside because the the planet's only look going, like got like half gravity in there it's not a, got a very dense atmosphere so every time you opened it up there was a little for each one that you opened up but this one actually feels warm okay warm. i'm oh, okay. sure i'm going to take the uh I'm going to take the free rad badge, not the one we've been throwing along in a string. And I am going to hold it like for a minute against Mm -hmm. the, uh, against the, the door. It's warm. um, You know, it it doesn't, it doesn't uh, change its temperature. And sorry, it doesn't change uh, color. Okay. So you're in there, right. remember you're inside this you're inside this dark ship. The only light is from your torchlight. There's bits of dust everywhere. The place All right. it's, it's got that ozone smell of space. Bubba, Dr. Lady, stay out of direct line. I'm gonna I'm gonna pop this hatch. I'm gonna give it maybe three centimeters of gap. Just enough to slide this in. Don't look into the gap. Don't stand in a straight line in the gap. And I do that. Okay. And wait um, like a... Yeah. Go ahead. Yep, so you, you open it up. There's a hiss. Um, you can feel the, the pressure of as it wants to open more, more, but it's not a huge amount of pressure because it's only like half atmospheric pressure pushing against your, your hand. Um, and then there's the weight of the, the hatch as well that's uh, holding it back. And a fairly strong guy, so you can handle it. So, yep, you open it up an inch and chuck the thing in. Um, and uh, when you open it up, uh, a steam comes out. Not like <laughs> great gushes of steam, but uh, steam comes out, like the steam you get out of the, the top of the cab. Okay. So you, I'll pull the fish line. A room, full of, a room full of it. Okay. I pull the fish line out and shut it. What's the what's the badge look like? Uh, the the badge looks fine, but it was only exposed for you know twenty or thirty seconds. Okay, you'd need an engineer to tell you exactly what's happening here. I look at my two companions. Well. The reactor could be a couple of chest x-rays. It could be 3.6. Not great. Not terrible. Um, You wouldn't happen to be a reactor technician, would you, uh, uh, Dr. Professor Lady Woman? No, she says. (sighs) But whether we want to salvage this thing or stand it upright and fly it out of here, we're going to need an engineer. Let me guess. You just so happen to know one. Uh, No, I don't, but we can go down and hire one. All right. Well, I think probably that's the best bet um, before we go poking with something that Maybe could have a bad reaction. It says either that or we just loot it for what we can carry and get the hell out of here and leave those. That's not a bad, that's not a bad idea, idea either. <laughs> leave those just and justice alone. They've waited here some years. They could wait here some more. I always hate that about hypersleep. You know, you're never never sure exactly how much time you lose. <laughs> Anyway, did, um, did did Banjo ever radio me back to let me know what uniform the corpse was yeah. wearing inside their back suit? Oh, um, he was wearing some sort of generic space uniform. He wasn't wearing a naval uniform. This isn't a naval. This is some sort of suit. Ship. Um, yeah, he was wearing some sort of generic space uniform, but. 
unless it's a navy ship, most people will do. Even if they've been contracted to someone, you know, they just have their everyday kind of boiler suit when they're at work. And but anyway, Ben said, I just looked in the, I just looked in the cracked helmet. I didn't, you know, cut over this and have a bigger look. I don't, you know, I thought it was just a big guy. It, I don't disturb them. They don't disturb me. Okay. Um, all right, everybody, let's reconvene back at the main lock, find out how we're going to cover this up temporarily, go to town, get a couple of power systems engineers, maybe somebody who can work the two little levers. Oh, wait, that's me. And then we'll, uh, we'll see about, uh, see about how exactly we're going to approach this with blow torches and wrenches or with, uh, some pilots licenses and, uh, some reaction mass, shall we? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Sounds good, says Ben. All right. We'll break camp, load up into the ATVs and, uh, um, we'll have us a sing along as we head back to the port. <laughs> Uh, super chat Alrighty. if you, uh, if, if, if you want uh, Todd to sing or not. Sorry about that, Todd. Miss, missed that you had slipped off. Oh, that, that's okay. It's it's a wonderful South Arkansas Wi-Fi. <laughs> I, think, I think they're doing some work on the pipes that they pump the sunlight in with. I'm not sure. <laughs> Yeah, I, I had a uh, distance client who said who claimed the internet was a can on a string. And I think I've mentioned this before. There was a up until like the mid '90s, Australia's data connection to, uh, well, I mean, to the larger internet was a like a single dedicated 256k line. For everybody to use, like if you were at a university, want internet connectivity, you get to share it with what thirty million other people, forty million. Yeah, yeah. We, we knew it was um, a couple of years back. The whole country had this massive internet outage, and uh, it got throttled for everyone because um, somebody's ship had uh, gone through the cable just off the coast of Singapore. Doe. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that was the story anyway personally i think it was you know chinese avatars but you know it was a story i'm okay with that i i'm i, I i'll actually i'll actually buy that for a dollar <laughs> you know i actually remember hearing something about that if i remember right what what, what wasn't it like a submarine or something yeah i know it was, it was something dodgy going on Okay. It usually is. Um, can't trust me. Speaking of dodgy things, does anything dodgy happen on the way back to uh, back to uh, the city there? No. There's always that pregnant pause when you're asking the team. So, does anything happen on our journey? <laughs> Die roll. <laughs> Die roll. <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, do we get back in time that day to hit the hiring halls or whoever, wherever we have to go to get a couple of power systems people? Um, well, uh, there aren't really hiring halls. There's, uh, there's bars and, of course, there's workplaces because the uh, sea itself uh, you know it's got its own power system so it'll have a, 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 a probably new a fission nuclear power running it um, you know it's got its own people driving around in trucks you know what I mean it's a, it's a city yeah it's a it's in uh, it's a modern city in, ga in game terms uh, so that means that uh, it will have qualified people running around so you can 
just go up and ask and you know, see who's employed and unemployed. And of course, there's you know bars and your factories and all that sort of stuff. Sure, and I mean you what know, you're looking is for is what you're looking for is fairly generic skills. Um, you're not looking for you know the, the pilot in the galaxy or something like that. You're looking for someone who can tell you is this thing safe and if you wanted to get up and stand upright. How would we do that and that sort of thing? Okay, well, I will. Uh... Um, I will set about to doing that. I will, I will, uh, start reaching out to, uh, so I, I mean, people, there's three kinds of people who know everyone. There's pool shop owners, barmen, and barbers. We'll start with a bartender. Okay. You don't want to go visit my friends at the pawn shop? Um, no. Never want to go back to the same well too many times, uh, too too frequently. Um, so I'll buy a round of drinks for the three of us because I'm not letting her out of my sight. That's Sloppy Joe's. <laughs> so you go back to Sloppy right. Joe's? Oh, that's the restaurant. Yep. Um, yeah, you want the uh, the, the downpour bar. The downpour. Okay, yes, yeah, so at the downpour. Downport. <laughs> but yeah, downpour works too. Downport. Down, downpour at the downport. Um, so, do you happen to know anybody? There, there's, there's a barman, and there's a barman, and we'll call him Mike because he looks a lot like Mike and I from uh, Breaking Bad. This Elmer Fudd looking guy. Right. Um, I have a need of a reactor power systems guy. Uh, um, now, out of character, do I mean? Do I have enough knowledge to to tell him accurately what I'm looking for? Um, yeah, you do because you've been a navy uh, navy commander. Right. I, I I figure I figure as much. So yeah, you know somebody who's familiar with uh you know mw1 power systems um yeah yeah so you haven't done the job but you have supervised people who do the job and so you know when they're competent or not okay all right do you know anybody i can talk do you know anybody i can talk to mike and i slide him a couple of credits <clears throat> and he says well, um, there's the power plant in town that gives mm. the city most of its power. Uh, the, yeah, there's a bunch of guys there. Um, you know, they, they're usually in the fancier part of town, those uh, nuclear engineers. Um, there's those guys. The, but, I mean, you want the first a lot of guys to be dropped down and demobilized here or mustered out here. There have been quite a few coming in over the last year. Most seem to have just found local jobs, uh, even if they weren't working in the same area. So uh, he says, yeah, none, none, no names come to mind at the moment, but I could put the word out if you want. All right. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, uh, yeah. Or you, know, you, could, you could put a piece of paper up on the wall over there next to, you know, uh, when the, the next band's coming in and all the rest. Uh, sure. You know what? Uh, I'll, I'll do both here. And I hand him 10 more and say, um, you know, uh, I'll 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 make it I'll make it worth your while if we can get a couple of competent guys on board with us. So thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. He said, and, um, but, but, but Bubba leans over and says, "I ain't got but one question for you." To me or how to the bartender? To, to to the bartender. Okay. How come there ain't no dancing in this honky tonk? <laughs> this is well, you usually get dancing when there's. Uh, when there's a, bar, uh, a band in and then people get enough drinks in them and they start 
loosening up and dancing. When's the next time a band's coming in? Uh, to here it's on Friday night. Oh, yeah? But Bubba yeah. perks up at that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's Monday night now, so. Um, okay, and he says, uh, aside from that, well, if you want uh, more mechanically minded people, um, Bellard down at the pawn shop with a lot of them because he's always selling tools and things like that. All right. Yeah, All I, right. Mean, well, I mean, yeah, the, uh, the, the hardware store also sells lots of tools and that, but that's the, the big box one that's on the every damn world out there, the Home Depot. Uh, you don't want to go there. That's all this junk made cheaply. Um, so people tend to go to the pawn shop so they can get the old tools that were made well. So he tends oh, to know the good God. mechanics. All right. Well, I'll ask him. Thank you again. So we'll uh, uh, finish up and go over to the pawn shop then. Well, I, I look at Bubba as we're walking over. I owe you an apology. At the pawn shop it is. Well, Captain, you can go in. I don't think they like me too much in there. Plus, we need to keep an eye on the fancy lady that lies. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, you, you, and uh, you and the professor here. Why don't you? I don't know. Well, you've got Benjo as well. Remember, you've got your um, your pile oh, that's, that's true. What why don't you? Why don't you and Banjo here help the doc <laughs> make notes on the local pavement or something while I go in? <laughs> notes on the local pavement. Oorah! All and right. He breaks out a pad and pencil and just starts intently staring and making notes. <laughs> I go into the pawn shop. <clears throat> and he says, oh, and he says, oh, good evening, sir. See you again. Oh, good evening to you. You've been here once. You were here before. And you got the right papers. Yes. And you got the right papers. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, you were really, really helpful the last time I was in, and I am actually kind of in a bit of a fix now. Uh, nothing bad. Nothing bad. I'm just looking for uh, some power, some folks who have a good working knowledge of power systems. I got an old MW1 class uh, power plant. I'd uh, I'd like somebody who knows the uh, the the feed in from the emergency purge end, if you know what I'm talking about. Uh, no, sh but you don't own a ship, do you? Says? He crosses a bit when he says it. Me? No, no. I, uh, th this, this is more of a general power systems, uh, issue that I'm looking for, uh, looking for a set of skilled hands on. What do you mean a general one? We've got the power plant in town. That's, have you been hired to work on that or something? Well, it's more of a um, more of a localized power system than a, a broad infrastructure one. Um, well, nobody I just has got a few. Yet. Nobody has backup clear yet. So, what's uh, where's this? You know, where's this reactor you want to have a look at? What's going on here? Oh well, I mean, if you're concerned, I can assure you it's 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 not anywhere it's not anywhere local. But I mean, if you don't if you don't know anyone, I'm certainly I don't want to take up any more of your time. Um, as I said, you were great help the last time I was in here, and I I don't want you to feel like he, he looks he looks very worried. <laughs> he looks very very worried, and he says, "What are you up to here?" What am I up to? Who said I'm up to anything? I just need somebody who's got a good handle on power systems. So 
flows yet. Which power system, though? What are you trying to get worked on here? I told you, an MW1. It's a uh, sodium uh, cooled uh, closed loop power system. This is really only used on starships. Are they? Huh. Interesting to know. Very interesting to know. Do you know anyone who's uh, in that line of work? Where did you find yourself a starship? I didn't say I found myself a starship. We're talking about power plants, and you're over here. Oh, starship. I'm talking about power systems. There was, there, there was a woman in here a week or two ago who was asking around about where a, where one might be buried out in the wilderness somewhere. And we, of course, had no idea what she was talking about. Huh. All right, look, I'm going to be honest with you. Kind of look around. I got this buddy I served with, right? He's a Marine, real salt of the earth guy, smart when it comes to what he knows how to do. He's convinced that he's built himself a viable spacecraft. Frankly, I'm terrified of what's going to happen if he switches the thing on. And I just want to have somebody give it a once over. Yeah, he doesn't believe you. <laughs> no, I doesn't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> it's like saying, you know, he's built himself his own 747. He doesn't believe you. <laughs> All right. But again, you know, if if you don't um, if you don't know anybody, I, I I certainly I don't want to pester you. Uh, thank you very much. Hey, how much for that brass uh, bulldog paperweight? How much is that? <laughs> yeah, he um, he's still looking worried, and he kind of you know lets you know it's time for you to leave. All right. Well, um, I don't 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 sell the paperweight. I got my eye on that. I got my eye on that. Holidays are coming up faster than you think. All right. All right. And uh, as you go out, he closes the door behind you, and you see he's closing up for the day. Um, you, you, <laughs> for sale you, sign flips around. <laughs> you, are, uh, open you, you glance at your watch, and you see that he's closed uh, 45 minutes early. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's turning the, turning the lights off. Seems to be in a hurry. All right, I'll rejoin my friends. So that, well, that that, le that um, leaves the barber. Bunkers out. Uh yeah, it's uh, Arkansas Internet again. <laughs> okay, I'll um, I'll go get my ears lowered. <laughs> Grab a paper. I'm assuming that print is still a thing and it's not a data pad. Yeah, yeah, print's still a thing, especially on this world. Um, you know, when there are printers, they're mostly the uh, the, the type with the holes in the, the each side of the paper. Right, so it's, uh, uh, yeah, I gotcha. Um, this is the kind of technology that you see in Alien. Yeah. Basically. Uh, tractor tractor feed. That's what that's called. That's a uh, tractor feed. Um, okay. So right. you just missed uh, um, like old uh, old Ballard in his pawn shop and that. He was all very suspicious of this like, because you'd only get that kind of a reactor on starships. And um, and Reggie obviously doesn't own a starship <laughs> and none have come down recently. So why would he be looking for one? And uh, he also... The Ballard also mentioned that there was a lady wandering around asking questions a while like about some starship that might have been buried out in the wilderness. Hmm. And so as he shooed as he shooed Reggie out, um, 
heat quite 45 minutes early for the day. All right. Well, and so now you're heading off to the barber. All right. Yeah. So I'll head into the barber. Like I said, grab a paper, sit down. If there's, if there's uh, people waiting. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's early evening. There's, there's many people waiting. So you get seen fairly soon by this okay. old guy. And he looks exactly like every barber out there uh, throughout the world. Uh, you know, he's an old guy with, that, with the, uh, the hairs like that because he's, his hair is receded. Um, and uh, he's wearing a, a white jack, white button-up jacket um, to uh, to keep all the uh, hair off his regular clothes. And uh, you know, there's pictures of women on the wall, and pictures of movies, and uh, pictures of cars, and so on. Pictures of pictures of boxes. Oh, uh, flips uh, the sports uh, pages on. Barbers never change. <laughs> I'll uh, flip to the sports page as I'm sitting there. And um, is there any kind of league play happening? Anything like that? I can I can just kind of small talk about a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, who do you like in the semifinals? <laughs> All right. So you, you have a bit of small talk to uh, establish a role, and you just have an overall neutral reaction to you. In you know, he's he's uh, friendly in that professional way. Sure, he, sure. Uh, I'll just tell him, you know, give me a. Uh, obviously, I've got a navy cut, so I'll just tell him, eh, just clean it up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Spend enough time on ship, just staring at dull green painted walls, and you forget that uh, the ears need to get lowered every now and again. <laughs> yep. Okay, so what what are you going to engage him on? What are you going to try to bring up? Um, I'll tr just to casual track. Um, hey, I'm uh, I'm looking to do a bit of hiring. Um, some uh, I, looking looking for a few different engineering types, but probably. I need to start with uh, somebody with a power systems knowledge. You know, anybody I can power. talk to? Power systems, he says. Wow. Uh, well, there's those guys. This is the guys at the town reactor. I don't know too many of them. Mm. Uh, there's... Uh, well, I mean, the guys, the guys at the warehouse might know somebody too because, you know, they're the Starport warehouse because they see the guys come in and get mustered out. Um, and then there's uh, then there's old Blood as well down at the pawn shop. He, he's kind of a strange fellow. He says he, he dropped down full, must have been maybe thirty five years ago, something like that. He Appeared from out of nowhere with nothing but a boiler suit and uh, built himself up a you know bit of local uh, his local business. Um, he always seemed a little bit always seemed a little bit dodgy to me. But, yeah, that's pop born shop owners for you. Um, but yeah, he seemed to know lots about about uh, Starship. Well, I mean, most you know most of us have never been off well, but. He seemed to have traveled around the world, but he talks really? about it less and less as the years go on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's he's not from here. He's, he's not he's not uh, born Gibsonite. Really? Huh? Interesting. Yeah, yeah. He, he, like I said, about thirty-five years ago, he just appeared, came in right. out of the wilderness. I, you know, I'm just. Uh... Uh, speaking of wilderness, you ever get out doing any do any fishing? Fishing? Well, yeah. no. This place is miles from the, the ocean, and the uh, the rivers have all been everything's killed by the, the uh, reactor. 
in the river. No. They just jumped all that hot water. That's a shame. Yeah, now that I'm out of the nav, you know, I'm looking for a place to put my feet up, a hunting cabin, some place I can go fishing. But uh, well, this doesn't sound like it. I mean, not not that I well, haven't enjoyed a, it. There's a but, few cabins out in the woods there. A few hunting cabins out in the woods to the north. All right. Good to, good to know. Good to know. Um, yeah, you could, uh, um, you'll see... Uh, if you go into yourself, I see you've got yourself a firearm already, but if you go for any long arms, when you go to get license, you'll see that mm -hmm. there's, um, you'll see that there's hunting organizations. They tend to put their flyers up in the license office because they're always looking for new members. Oh, great. Great. Thank you so much. Oh, uh, this looks fantastic. Where were you, were you in? Me? No, 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 I wasn't in, but, you know, I've had with uh, you guys over the years, and uh, we get plenty of the border guys come in, the border patrol guys come in, too. Well, this looks great. You could set a nav comp by this. Thank you so much. I was never here, and I hand him 100 <laughs> and turn around and walk out. How about you, Buck? Are you going to get a tight, you your high and tight? Yeah, yeah, it's getting a little long. I'm starting to look like one of them space hippies. <laughs> Yay, brother. <laughs> Heading out to Eden. <laughs> I'm saying it's his okay. fault. He said space hippies. Good. I'm sorry. I've so, had the talking are you gonna, too long. If you're going to engage him in more than small talk, Bubba. Yeah. I'm going to ask you. So so you, you from here on Gibson in uh, this, this uh, community? Yes, sir. He said yes, sir. Boy, bo born and bred. That's right. Big team. So, life. what do y'all do around here for fun, man? Because I went to the honky tonk and there wasn't no dancing. I had to grab a girl and make her dance with me. Just one song. He says, well, "I'm married, so I don't do much da dancing." But uh, he says, "Yeah, look, when they have the live bands, that's when the dancing happens." You know, in the old days, there used to be dance halls and that, but not so much now. But when they do the live bands, it did that. Right, right. Well, uh, other than the honky tonk, what y'all do around here for fun? Well, we're drinking and shooting. Um, shooting? Uh, and what y'all shoot? Yeah, yeah. Well, we uh, we shoot deer and pig. And, uh, really? And, and, yeah, yeah, and the local raptors, the natives of this. They're, they're no good to eat, but uh, they're still good to shoot. Up the woods, I'll up the wall. Now, now... Do, do, do you reckon, has anybody tried to catch one of them flying raptors with a fishing pole? Go raptor fishing? <laughs> okay, so you just, <laughs> you just engage in small talk then. <laughs> or is that is this leading somewhere? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm trying to slowly gain his trust to, you know, get him yeah, to yeah, open yeah. up a little Good. bit more. Trying to get a bonus to reaction roll. Yep, that works. Good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh because I'm, I'm wanting to work up to to tell him and look my my buddy there's in the navy and he's scared because you know i'm an ex-marine and i'm telling you i done it i have done built me uh one of them starship engines out of scraps i ain't never been trained just kind of played it by ear He's scared of me turning the daggum thing on. I'm saying, trust me. I'm look. The thing is, if we could find somebody to give this thing the once over, so I can turn it on and prove to him I can be a self-taught person, it'd mean a lot to me. <laughs> he doesn't really believe you. He obviously thinks you're a bit loopy. <laughs> Because it's just not a plausible one. Like I said, it's like saying that you built a 747. So I built this aircraft carrier in the creek behind my house. and <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> so you, you, don't, you don't think I could have built an engine using scrap? No. <laughs> it's like, um, 
remember that TV show in the eighties? Like a bill. What it's called? The one that guys have got basically they're uh, they're like scrap motors. They got junk satellites and stuff. And the spacecraft is basically a concrete mixer or something. Salvage one, and it was actually filmed in Titusville, Florida, uh, which we uh, lived not too far from. Uh, it uh, starred Andy Griffith was was the uh, was, was the guy. Show. Yes, <laughs> kind of based on a real company, but the guy never tried to fly the rockets. But he would literally buy scrap lots from nasa so on his scrapyard yes he had pieces of atlas missiles pieces of space capsules pieces of just whatever detritus nasa didn't consider classified or serviceable and he would buy it for like you know a penny but you have to drive it all away and promise you're not going to try and build a rocket and fly it now, see, that's that. That's what I tell the. Uh, that that's what I tell the barber that my dad runs a junk shop, a junkyard, and that I have <laughs> piecemeal one together. Okay, he was kind of warming to you, but now he thinks you're another. <laughs> so, yeah. once you're done, completely frustrating and confusing this man worse than you, the player do when you sing our audience uh i will uh i will meet you uh, outside and say hey you're never gonna guess what i found out for my hundred dollar haircut you paid a hundred dollars that's not important hundred credit excuse me hundred credit haircut no. that's not important um and i, I Bean says, with, you paid a hundred dollars for that haircut I can't believe you paid a hundred dollars for that haircut. That's ridiculous. I didn't pay. Look, I didn't pay a hundred credits for the haircut. That's not did important. He, did he? Did he charge you per hair follicle or something? Because he didn't me. He must have gave me the Marine Group discount on my hair or something. I will blow you out an airlock. <laughs> Chiquel says I wouldn't have paid a hundred dollars for that. Right. Right. What is and the I like military? I like military. And I like the military look, but I wouldn't have paid a hundred dollars for that. Um, I will slap to death the next person who who starts about haircuts. Listen carefully to me. Our friend over at the pawn shop was probably on that boat. You think so? Yeah. Per the barber. He just showed up in town one day with a load of various junk wearing Ta-da, a normal boiler suit. Nobody knew where he came from. He's from off world. When I went in there and started asking him about asking him about space power systems, he freaked out and he mentioned you, young lady, as being another person. So I think what we need to do right now. And I know it's a good uh, it's a good multi hour drive, but is get our asses back to the dig site because I got a feeling that uh, he's either headed there now or or is about to show up. So if we could just move along, I'm driving. I d I literally don't care. <laughs> you can ride shotgun, Captain. Whatever. Let's go. And as we as we jump in and take out Bubba, Bubba singing really loudly, uh, Born on the Bayou. <laughs> All right. So you uh, you burn off. You're having a very long day. You burn off uh, in your vehicles, in your ATVs. You go along. Um and uh, as you approach the uh, ship's crash site where it's, it's mostly excavated, you've still got your, uh, you'd probably still have a digger there. And you wouldn't have taken that back and forth for some reason. Yeah? Um, sure. Yeah, because it would have taken you know, most of the day to pack everything up. So, um, okay, so you, you burn on out to the rocky terrain. And you approach the dig site, and as you approach the dig site, you see that there 
there's an ATV there ahead of you. Apparently empty. Uh, its lights are not on. Oh, no, actually, no, it's, uh, its lights are on and they're shining to the aft part of the ship where the hatch is. Alrighty, well, we're going to go right to it. Bubba's in full-blown Marine. Somebody's infiltrated our base mode. <laughs> All right. So uh, as you uh, as you roll up, you see uh, out of the out of the hatch comes a guy. It's not Ballard. It's, it's some young guy. It comes a guy, and he's he, he hauling up on some uh, packing straps a, a crate. A big plastic crate. Looks very much like the kind of crate that you had uh, previously cracked open and seen. Uh, uh, you pretty precious metals. In. All right. Well, if he's fully engaged with that, just when we roll up, I'll, I'll just kind of stand up because it's an open top vehicle with it and uh, just say, Hi there. How you doing <laughs> this evening? <laughs> and he looks around. He sort of blinks in your general direction because it'd be very hard to see you because he's. The headlights of his vehicle are shining on him. You know, it's like the car stopped on the side of the highway at night, and you know you're in the front of the vehicle. You've got the bonnet open, and the the lights are on, and everything. To see in it, like see be someone coming up behind the vehicle is very difficult. You will have your own light because you would have wanted to avoid striking animals and large rocks and stuff. So he'll he'll see them, and he sort of blinks in your general direction. And he continue, continues hauling. It pulls the thing up and clunk onto the side of the, uh, the craft, spacecraft. And he pulls something down into the spacecraft. And he something can call back. Okay. Um, I have my sidearm in my hand and uh, Bubba, uh, Banjo. Nice professor lady person. And yeah, we're, she, doesn't, we're gonna... she doesn't have a firearm. Okay. Um, if she had, you would have taken it off her by now anyway. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I would have, so she can kind of lag behind a little bit. But, um, yeah, so it's just you and Tonka who are armed, and you each have a pistol. Okay. Um, you know, it's the darndest thing. There must have been a screw up with the reservations. This is actually the lot we're camping at. So if you could just uh, put your hands where I can see them, that'd be great. And the guy who's um, the guy who's uh, halfway in the airlock, something long gets handed to him from below. I put out Bubba and he yells, levels that take you. cover. Uh, I am right. going to shoot at so him. This is when you, yeah, this is when you, all right, determine either party is surprised. Okay. Right, so you roll one die for each party. If one party is so combat for all you viewers, this is finally we get to a combat in Traveler. Uh, if one party has a die roll three or more greater than the other party, higher rolling party has achieved surprise. Things are allowed. So, any lit expertise. So, does Reggie have leadership? No. Does Tunka have leadership? No. no. Okay. Any tactical expertise? No. Oh yeah, I, I no. got I got one oh. in tactics. Oh yeah, I've just got tactics. Yep. So you get a, you guys will get a plus one. Um, any military experience? Yes, you both got military experience. So that's another uh, another plus one becomes plus two. Okay. Um, all right. Now, so all right. Now, normally all attacks are, res are made and resolved simultaneously. The surprise round is when you get to attack without them attacking back. If you manage to achieve surprise, all right. 
the guys on the these guys uh, do not have military experience, but um, they, uh, sorry, no, uh, they do have military experience plus one. So it works out to be you guys got plus one, uh, plus two, and I got plus one. I roll, sorry, six. So I get seven. What do you guys get? Eight. I rolled a six. Eight. Eight. Yeah. Okay. So surprise doesn't occur. Uh, you'll be shooting each other simultaneously. You've just got okay. one guy firing at you. Okay. Now this one guy is firing at you. Uh, you're at medium range, which is six to 50 meters. Okay. Now, you have got, Bill, a, uh, what they call a, well, yeah, so in, in game terms, just you've got a revolver. Okay. Okay. Now, weapons matrix, when you look up revolver, there is, um, so revolver, there's a required strength. Sorry, by dexterity of at least seven and advantageous dexterity of nine. So if you have decks of nine or more, no, you don't. Uh, no, you don't. so you've just got in the middle. Because if you've got not enough, I'm, I'm just talking you guys through it so that uh, any listeners can figure out what the combat is like. In reality, you just calculate it for your weapon and write it down in your character sheet and uh, and then, um, then you don't have to look it up all the time. So a revolver, if you don't have enough dexterity, you get a, a negative to your roll, and if you have more than enough dexterity, uh, you know, a few points higher, the, you get a bonus. Bill's right in the middle because it's seven and nine, mm -hmm. and he's got eight, eight dexterity. So there's no uh, bonus or malice to it. Um, then there's uh, range, uh, medium range or revolver is minus three. Okay. Okay. Um, and then there's armor this guy is wearing no armor so uh, um, you get plus one so you can't get minus three and you need eight plus eight plus on 2d right so unless something changes yes so unless, unless um, something changes you need to roll in a total of 10 just roll a 10 a 10 or more All right. and that'll do 10 10 okay so you hit him uh, and yeah, he will also roll to hit you. He has a submachine gun that's at medium range. Yikes! Plus three. And then um, he got um, another. Yeah. Okay. He, and he gets another plus five because you're wearing no armor. So that becomes plus eight. eight um and he has right in the middle dexterity so yeah so he gets a plus eight to hit, eight to hit. he will hit you so you hit him and he hits you okay now we look up the damage revolver does three dice minus three and a sub uh, a sub machine gun does the same seven twelve so you'll, you'll take nine. Ouch. Uh, let me see. That was, um, was three, five, 11. You'll take eight. You'll take eight. Right. So both of you go down. You go <laughs> bang, bang. <laughs> and this little bird. And then both of you go down. Okay. Uh, but Tucker's shooting two. Todd, you're shooting two. So. Um, and and I, I have a dex of ten, so uh -huh. so you get a total uh add in test one a plus one, so you'll just need nine or more here. Okay, and, and and also um just to let you know, while I'm shooting at this guy that's shooting at us, I wanna be running toward their ATV. Well that you 
Well, one, 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 one more time. You, you, you cut out on me. Uh, in trying to get one round, you do. Okay. You can run at them, or you can shoot. Oh, okay. Well, okay, then I'm, I'm shooting. Okay, I'm shooting. Yeah. And I rolled a ten. Yeah. So you hit him. So roll for your damage. Three dice minus three. Three D six minus three. That's right. A grand total of six. Six. Okay. Uh but Bill had already um had already hit him. So so the way it works is your strength dexterity endurance. Um whenever uh somebody's hit it damage to one of their stats. And it reduces that to zero if like onto the next stat. One stat Reduce to zero, you're unconscious. Wake up again in 10 minutes, half between zero, and your full stat. Um, two stats go to zero, you're severely wounded. You need next attention in order to wake up again a couple of hours later. Again, halfway. Three stats to zero, kaput, you are dead. So, um, this guy is now severely wounded. So, uh, Bill's character, Reggie, he falls down uh, unconscious. This guy who's shooting at you with his SMG, he just ro- you see blood spitting out of him, and he just drops into the craft because he was you know, hooked up on the um, on the block. He just drops in. And that was the combat. <laughs> For now, anyway. <laughs> okay, so... It's uh, the the damage basically comes off of strength, dexterity, and endurance. Correct. Yeah, yeah, a random one. Then. Okay, so you uh, all right. <laughs> usually to endurance first. Okay, all right. Now I see why I'm unconscious. Because I'm like, wait, I got a strength ten. I should still be up. But uh, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. Now did 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 I get hit by the machine gun fire too? No, he was just blasting on me. Because he was the guy who was talking to him. He was the guy who was talking to him, and it was also a matter of visibility. Because, uh, so you guys, you had your vehicle. Remember, as I said, the guy had the lights from his own vehicle in, in his eyes. Your guy's vehicle came up, so he could see the lights there. Yeah. There's a cabin, which is hard for him to see. But then there's Reggie, who was standing um, through the sunroof. He specifically said he was standing in the sunroof and calling out. So he was the most visible one. So that's the guy that uh, shot at. That's all it works in a co- in combat. If you stand up and shout at the enemy, then... <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so he, he's fallen down. Um, and uh, Benjo and Jacob. Uh, can old Benjo will uh, tend to him and and yeah, I think he's going to be right. Just a grazing wound, he's just done. And Jacob goes, "Why the hell are you guys shooting? <laughs> What's all this about? There's enough loot in there for everyone." <laughs> <laughs> all right, so okay, so uh, there's, 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 silence. there's just the there's silence. There's just the tick the uh, ticking of the engines. As the ends cooled down, uh, having been stopped, you hear some movement around inside the uh, spot. But nobody reaches up to come out of the hatch. Hatch. Nobody reaches up to uh, to um, you know, close it or anything. But there was somebody else inside because he was holding thing up. It wasn't blood. It was it was a younger, more popular guy. Um, somebody and uh, somebody handed in the submachine gun. There's nobody in the other uh, ATV. The enemy ATV, I guess you can call it. It's just you guys. So ten minutes goes past, and Bill, you up at uh, three endurance. Okay. 
Hey, you got the same endurance as I do now. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> so yeah, you wake up feeling way uh, Reggie feels all. Uh, sorry, Dougley feels all the time. <laughs> Ain't it great, Captain? Yeah, it's wonderful. Hey, asshole! <laughs> Towards the ship. You hear voice back. Sounds familiar like Bella. Yeah, what do you want? <sighs> yeah, if it isn't the pawn shop guy. I thought you sounded a little twitchy when I started asking you about power systems. Yeah, well, what do you want? I came here and make a new life. And you guys come along to fuck it all up. Now, is that any way to talk to the people who are going to save your life? Save my life? I'm not going to die. Why would I die? Oh. No. You're going to die, buddy. It's happening. You see, I'm trying to save your life. This guy's a certified maniac. He's a Marine. So unless you got any barbecue flavored crayons, I'd recommend you come out with your hands up and don't make us come in there and pry you out. Speaking of barbecue, he says, I'm the only one who's got the elevation keys for this drive. Oh, shit. Well, Bub Bubba yells, oh, yeah? Well, I'm the only one with the grenade with his finger on the pin. Who wins that one? <laughs> you ain't got a grenade, he says. You're right. Name, technically, name technically, one technically time you've seen charge. a Marine without a grenade. <laughs> and I, I, I turn, I turn to the to to Reggie there, and I say, Captain. Keep him talking, and I, I I start slipping out one sword, and I say I'm I'm going to try to sneak up and peer in. All right, <laughs> it's hard to sneak up. You have to go. Through the door. <laughs> well, what what I'm thinking is that if I can go wide, you know, and keep keep him occupied on Captain there, and I can kind of shoot out well, wide to the shadow. It's not poking. It's not his head. Calling oh. from inside the building. This is a or inside the vehicle, oh. the, the the ship. This, this is a siege. You mean that the ship's lying outside? There's the airlock sitting up top. The guy that you shot dropped down through the airlock and into the ship, severely wounded. And then there's the voice calling up from inside. You can't really think. The only way in is through that airlock. Look, it's, Ballard, it's like a PC sort of situation, except I only got one door they can go through. So, Ballard, what about the popsicles? I mean, I'd buy your sob story about just looking to start a new life and everything if it wasn't for the jumpsuited goons. Yeah, well, sometimes when a man goes away, he goes away with men who are worse than him. That's why they're oh, still on ice. Oh, really? And you were just going to leave him there indefinitely? No, nah, they've got my stash to keep the company. Well, why not just flip the switch then? I'm not a killer. Not like you guys. <laughs> Poor Henry here is bleeding out. <gasps> Poor Henry there just shot me with three nine millimeter bullets. Well, you're you going shot to him. Joining, you're going to be joining poor Henry when I get a hold of you. <laughs> Ballard, listen, I'm I'm tired of the hollow action fit flick drama, okay? <laughs> you want to get Henry patched up, then come out of there. Come out, you just shoot us. No, I'm not going to. I'm not going to shoot as bad as Ballard. You have my word, Ballard. I'm not going to shoot you. <laughs> What's your with me?
All right. Um, you see a little object. You hear shuffling from inside. So I'm going to... You see a little object poke up. Something pokes up from uh, inside the airlock. Not not flies out, just sticks up, right? No, no just something's gradually poking up. Okay, does it look like a gun barrel or anything? You can't see from this distance. And, you know, in the in the darkness and the, the contrast of the bright light and the darkness and everything, you just see... Did I mention I that, that uh, I, I've stepped back behind the ATV? Because I have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I figured that everyone's taking some sort of cover. Yeah. Well, Benjo, Benjo and um, Jacella remain in the ATV. Their hope is obviously that the end, the, you know, up down. Their hope is that the engine block will be sufficient. <laughs> well, B -B Bubba yells to him and says, "Just surrender, because right now we control your ATV and our ATV. If we leave, you're stuck out here." And then what you going to do yeah. when nomads come? Bleed on them? <laughs> i got friends in all sorts of places, he says. Just come out to Dagum Spaceship. Okay, so the thing that was... Um, the thing that was... Uh, poking out from the uh, airlock. Uh, it drops down, and then you hear this, this sort of a, a fumbling, and then a click, and it pokes back up. It pokes back up, and then you hear, <laughs> and a shot is fired. Okay. Um, Do you guys shooting or you just say under? Is, is he shooting at us? Well, you don't know. That's the nature of combat. You know, you just uh, something does. Re you react by ducking, running, or shooting. That's essentially your three options when when shooting does. Okay, so nothing pings near us as far as like a shot impact, right? Okay, so you're not firing. Because if you stop into I'm not, assess, I, 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 I'm, I'm not, I'm not firing. firing. I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure out where that might have How come from. Bubba firing. No, but Bubba, Bubba's going okay, so, to run into this to Bubba's their ATV. Okay, so you're taking cut. Okay, this flare goes up. Flare goes up into the sky. Big red flare, and then it, and then starts drifting down. It cuts an eerie light, shadows moving all around. As you go there, there's just this silence. There's just like I said, the ticking of the engines. There's the dull groan of the the wounded guy coming inside the, the craft, and then there's the uh, the rather eerie light, red light of the power flare drifting down. Down to the ground, and all the shadows moving around and so on. Hey, Captain, he just called for backup. Yeah, I'm aware of that. <sighs> Do you want to cut bait, take both ATVs, and skedaddle? Or do you want me to lob this grenade in there and end all this? I don't know. I'm tempted to say a little from column A and a little from column B. <laughs> um, let's get the hell out of here. Sure, 
Well, if you can do it and get it and, and, and drive, let's go. Banjo, Dr. Lady person, let's get the hell out of here before his help shows up. <laughs> Bubba. Bubba jumps in their ATV. <laughs> okay. so, and... All right. So you've been off in you've been off in uh, his ATV and yours going across the wilderness. Yeah, you occasionally occasionally drive a glance back, and about ten minutes later, you see uh, all these lights and uh, commotion around the uh, spacecraft crash site. <laughs> Lots of moving around. You're too distant by now because you know you're at least a few kilometers away, but you're too distant. Uh, by now to see exactly what's going on, but there's a lot of lights and commotion. So somebody's appeared there. Bubba starts singing a song and he says, there's a bathroom on the right. <laughs> oh, God. I'm glad I'm not in that ATV. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so you're heading back to border town. I mean, I just will have to. Okay. Well, there's the uh, the woods to the north, and there's uh, farmland to the west of Border Town as well. Uh, and then there's the other wilderness around to the south and east of Border Town. There's all that rocky no, woods. Wait a second. The barber said there were uh, hunting cabins in the uh, woods, right? That's right. <sighs> all right. Um, Hopefully, Bubba will see the tail where the tail lights are going. I'm headed in that direction, actually. Well, I've, I've, I've got I've got a walkie-talkie on me. Oh, okay. Yeah, you got there's radios on the ATVs. You just got to figure okay. out frequency what's being used. Totally unencrypted and all that, but well, at the same time, I don't want I don't want to broadcast in the open. Oh, hey, yeah, we're headed up to the. <laughs> Just remember what old Jack Burden said this moment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right about that time, them old Duke boys realized they'd lost themselves a spaceship. <laughs> <laughs> um, All right. Um, yeah, so uh, you get off towards the, uh, to the forest um, and eventually come across one of the dirt forest trails. It's not paved, uh, not paved roads uh, in this area. Go along the dirt forest trail, and uh, if you take your time, you should be able to find uh, a hunting cabinet. It's just a matter of how much time it takes. Roll two d six. I got a five total. I got a seven total. Okay. Um. Well, just one of you needed to do it. Yeah. Oh. So it takes a moderate amount of time. Uh, you drive all night and you know you go up a few dirt trails that lead nowhere or lead to you probably leads to like hunting blinds and things like that um uh the sun comes up again the the days and nights are relatively short it's just eight out eight an hour day on this planet and uh, about mid-morning you come across a hunting cabin cabin and uh let's roll one day six to see if it's already occupied Three. Three. Um, no, you you pull up and uh, you, you see a bit of debris around, you know, like the empty uh, ration packs and that sort of thing. Uh, it looks like someone was recently here, but they're not here now. So it's a heavily wooded area. Um, and this is, yeah, it's, it's a log cabin, glass windows. Uh, there's a stone chimney. There's stacks of firewood around and so on so you got to pull up with your vehicles here all righty well we will enter the cavern is this a, a cavern cabin Too much <laughs> tea in, I tell you. Uh, is this a primitive cabin or is this uh um is this like someone's weekend getaway or is this just like you know uh this is this is fairly basic Okay, so it's got okay. a long drop for a toilet outside and stuff, and um, it 
it's got uh, like wooden beds to sleep on, but you're obviously meant to bring your own sleeping mat and sleeping bags and so on. Uh, okay. And it's got a it's got a, a pump a water pump outside. So the idea is that yeah, like I said, you, you bring your own stuff to stay the weekend when you go out hunting. Um, and it, it's a place that stops you if somebody happened to be caught in a storm or something like that. It stopped them freezing to death. Okay. Um... Bubba asked Reggie, "You want me to uh, you, scout the perimeter? Maybe set up some uh, some booby traps." Tiger pits? No. I haven't <laughs> used the bathroom in a few days. I can make a mean tiger pit right now. <laughs> I think there's a slit trench outside if you have to go. I just need to th for a few minutes. Uh, Benjo yawns and uh, looks in the and uh, he says, uh, Hey, Bubba. You got a few cases in the back of your ATV here. Oh, I do? Cases you of beer? Have. Doesn't look like any beer in here, but it looks like cases from that ship. Oh, what's in them? Well, I don't know. We'll have to have, have a, open them and see. Well, let's do it. Okay. Do you well, want you... me to pick them up for you, Banjo? No, no, that's all right. He says he he just cracks open the first one. It's just got little ordinary little clips, um, and they're about yay big, you know, a couple of feet by a couple. Of feet. It's like a kind of a double briefcase size, uh, mm -hmm. except you know with, with extra plastic for padding and insulation and all that. Um, and uh, you open it up, and in this is uh, gold bars stamped with uh, the Imperial, like the Commonwealth, Commonwealth Mint, gold bars. I just, I just look at Banjo, put my finger over my lips, close the case back, and go. Worthless crap. <laughs> he sees the glint of gold. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> There's two other cases. You don't know what's in them though. Hey, Banjo, why, why don't you take uh, Dr. Lady in, in the cabin and y'all start burning wood or cooking something or something? Take her in the cabin. <laughs> and the uh, Jacqueline's in the background. She goes, what's in the case? A bunch of crap. Worthless crap. I'm interested in worthless crap. Let's have a look. I don't think you're interested in this. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I do think I'm interested in this. <laughs> let's let's have a look. She says. <laughs> Captain, there ain't nothing but junk over here. She's wasting her time. Then mm. you get her in the cabin. I haven't. I haven't seen this. So, <laughs> you know. I got shot. I've had a really awful night. <laughs> I'm really not interested in arguing about this. Look in the box. Don't look in the box. Honestly, I don't care. As long as there's not ham and Benjo egg. Says, and Benjo says there's gold. And I'm, I'm sure there's more, much more. Enough to be kings ourselves. Bubba just gives oh. Banjo the biggest dirty look in the world. <laughs> of course, it's I got go like over, I go over it's and got just push out of the way and flip the got, lid open. It's got a Commonwealth Mint stamp on it, so you know probably belonged to somebody important. But um, hey, Professor, student, archaeologist, doctor, heister, lady, come here. And she comes over. Yeah. Ah, she says. Well, this is the good news. We could pro we could either um, retire and live the fat life, or 
buy a ship. I, I'm saying to my two uh, two fellows who came off the uh, ship with me, um, whatever we want, and even a, a portion to you. The bad news is they're going to be just kind of thumbing off in the general direction we came. They're probably going to be coming and looking for this stuff soon. So yeah. you do want I'm, me I'm to surprised. make a tiger pit. Ben says, I'm surprised nobody found this already. I clap my hand on Banjo's shoulder, uh, or rather on Bubba's shoulder. Bubba, we may need tiger pits. <laughs> what, are, what are in the other two cases? In the other two cases, there's uh, silver. Well, it's best to diversify your your investment portfolio. I've always said. <laughs> so, how, right. how much are we looking at just in the cases that's in the back of uh, the ATV that Bubba was so brilliant in stealing? <laughs> Millions. Millions in credits worth. I look at the uh, I, I, I look at the the lady. Um, you know, you're not you're 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 not under any obligation to stay with us. <laughs> and as far as I'm concerned, you could take one of the ATVs and your share of this and ride off into the sunset. Again, the problem is. The people that took this out of the ship are going to come looking for us. Unless they're happy with just having the ship. Well, she says, Ballard was obviously leaving that there for a number of years. Or mm -hmm. spending it gradually. Um, if he did come down on the ship. so Which I suspect he did. Uh, he, um, so, so, yeah. See, Captain, told you this was a pirate ship and we got the booty. <laughs> we did indeed. So, um, what are your intentions to her? Uh, I would like to stand the ship up and take it off with the entire cargo and jettison the murderers in it. Um, I'm, I'm not inclined to disagree with you. Here's the question. Do we go find them or we do, we wait for them to find us. And speaking of which, uh, is the technology in the traveler universe such Kyle that they might have a tracker on this vehicle somewhere? Well, technology varies world by world, uh, just as in our modern world, it varies country by country. This particular world is it is tech level nine? Tech level nine. So it's essentially like modern day, but with like fusion, uh, fusion power works and that sort of thing. So they could have low jack. Yeah, they could have trackers and things like that. But, you know, uh, it's like, um, was it William Gibson or someone said, you know, the technology, the future is already here. It's just not evenly distributed. So, you know, people have access to stuff. Whether every person has access to everything is another matter. Okay. Well, I guess a, a trail-worn ATV probably doesn't. Um, yeah, and this, um, so your ATVs are rented. Your ATV is rented. Oh, yeah. But the one that you stole from Bellard was obviously his. Okay. His or somebody he knows. It was obviously person, uh, privately owned. Captain, I got an idea. I'm, 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 I'm riveted. What? <laughs> we take the booty, put it in the rented ATV, 
We mm-hmm. flatten the tires, leave the ATV here, and we just go somewhere else. Why would we leave the money here? No, we don't leave the money here. We take the booty and put it in our ATV. That, sure. <laughs> that's not what you said, but yes, that's that's fine. Um, I'm going to dig through the glove boxes and the ATVs. Do they have maps? Yes. All right. Um, I'm going to unfold one, lay it out on the hood of the ATV. Uh, let's see. Here's the starport. Here's the city. That means we're about here. How well do you know this planet, Doc? Not very well, she says. I've only been here a month or so. I see. Any other major cities on this continent? Any place where we could disappear or blend in? Uh, let's see. What's the um, population? Huge. I think you um, said it was a few, a few million, and the city we were yeah. in was like 100,000 plus. Yeah, uh, it's it's a non-industrial planet, so it means that it's largely rural. So there's, there's a lot of small cities. Mm. You know what I mean? There's a lot of places that are like... Um, you know, a 10, 20,000 people. A 20,000 so guys are always you, you guys are always going to stand out, though, because you're physically different, because the, the natives have grown up in half a gravity, so they're tall and scrawny. And you guys, okay. by their standards, are um, short and stocky. So we're the dwarves. We should start stalking with, uh, with Scottish accents <laughs> and how much we hate orcs. <laughs> um... <laughs> <laughs> a, f- a funny thing speaking speaking of hard science fiction if you've never read uh larry niven's the integral trees i i do recommend it but um it's a spacefaring society that lives in a uh a nebula and the nebula is a, a goldilocks level comfortable nitrogen oxygen ring around a neutron star so there's billions of miles of zero g but earth-like conditions otherwise and uh the navy the military of the smoke ring uh which calls itself the navy recruits hard for people that can that can sit in the powered armor from the first colonists and they refer to them as dwarves (laughs) <laughs> and the the requirements for wearing powered armor is being at least six feet six inches tall. <laughs> for for like a thousand years, people have lived in zero g, so your average person is like almost three meters tall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, they're not that bad, but yeah, they are relative to you. They're tall and skinny. Right. Um, Bob Jester says, I'm late, but in my defense, I was watching Tom Baker, Doctor Who. I didn't know there was another Doctor Who. Thank you for cluing us in. Um, (laughs) Integral Trees is a great book, Bob. Thank you very much for agreeing with me. Okay, so we need to find a nice 20 or 30,000 person town. Um, And disappear as best we can into it uh i like the idea of abandoning the rented atv here um but let's let's do that let's just ride into the sunset and and kind of figure things out i mean the this is the only spaceport if we can bide our time we might be able to get off world well, I think we can buy some time to get off world now. How so? Bubba just points at the trunks. We can buy time. Oh, oh, I thought you. All right. I thought you were speaking metaphorically. Um, Met- what? Never mind. <laughs> all right. Deflate the tires. Uh, I hate to do this to a rental company, but cut the stems. 
cut, cut the inflation stems, um, pull the uh, pull the distributor caps off the block, chuck them in the woods. Um, All right. Why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? A couple of guys carrying long arms uh, step into the clearing in front of the rental cabin. And they're obviously uh, locals, tall, skinny guys, and, and they're wearing, you know, um, they're, they're wearing hunting gear. Okay. One's, one's carrying um, what looks like a rifle, and the other one's carrying what looks like a shotgun. And uh, they say, good. And they say, uh, morning. Got morning. trouble with your vehicle there? Well, good morning. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, this this is just a rental. The rental company will come back around and pick it up. We're not uh we're not worried about it. The, this this ride and I thump the uh the other one. This this one's ours. Oh. Is your radio not working? We've got a radio back there. We can call the rental company for you if you need it. We I just did. We did we 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 just did. Hmm. Man, I like that shotgun. What 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 gauge is that? That's a 12 gauge, it says. So you like getting close before you pull the trigger, huh? Well, in in this kind of in this kind of bush, see that pig pop out of between the trees, you you're close whether you like it or not. What kind of pigs y'all got here? You can shoot them with the shotgun. <laughs> Well, you know, they're just the typical feral pig usually makes him think about things. Well, yeah, really shotguns, shotguns tend to educate people pretty quick. I agree with you on that one. They do. They do. They're very educational. And then uh, his buddy with the rifles leaning over. Man, looks like somebody slashed your tires. What kind of rocks you've been driving on? Uh, just... <sighs> Okay. All right. I'm sorry. It's my fault. Okay. I thought it'd be fun to go off-roading and we came through the Badlands up, up to the, the Northeast there. And, Oh, you don't want to go through the Badlands. You get the nomads there. They, they'll mess you up. I, yeah, I heard about that. And, you know, it's big, you know, just mustered out, kind of wanted to do something wild and crazy and, uh, my fault, you know. Is it, you know, those know sometimes they even come into the forest. You know, they 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 carry these big knives, and sometimes they even uh, they even come into the forest. He says, "Yikes! Wow! Okay. I mean, Thank they, they you may so be much. they may be savages, but they got to eat too." Yeah, no, I I completely understand. Hey. Thanks for the heads up, guys. I really appreciate it. Like I said, the rental agency they're they're going to send uh they're going to send a low boy out here and pick this up, and we're just we're just we're just going to grab our 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 gear and just just get on the way. This very embarrassing moment for me, obviously. So thanks, thanks, guys. Thanks very much. And he, he says, uh, "Yeah, I'm, I'm Trevor, by the way. This is Bruce. Trevor, Bruce. Good to meet you. Um, Trevor, Bruce. And nice there's this awkward." You. There's an awkward silence for a moment while you stand there, and and, it's, and you know Trevor's still looking at your tires of like, hmm, what's going on here, uh, and uh, there's Bruce just sort of looking at his shotgun. There's this awkward silence for a moment, and then just off in the in in the bush off to your right, there's a crunch, like a step. Okay. Instantly, and we'll leave it there. The credits roll. The credits roll. Oh my. Okay. All right. Exciting stuff. <laughs> Exciting stuff. You know, getting pulled in deeper. <laughs> so that episode was called "Rescue and Sel All Salvage," and you guys chose neither. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <clears throat> we chose Rescue the gold. Sin. Rescue, salvage, or larceny, and we chose <laughs> we chose door number three. We'll have to find out what that crunch was all about, and uh, and see what's going on now. Uh, Ka, we we're we're definitely guys to to our audience. I say 
we definitely have seats in the traveler game. If you're not yeah. on our disc, first of all, if you're not on the discord, um, let's see, let me just share that with you. Come join us on the discord and say, hi, put that there. Yeah. Come join us on the discord and say, hi. And if you want to play some classic traveler on Wednesday nights, let us know. We have uh, a channel on the Discord where you can pop in and and say hello. You can join up with us. Um, I, in all likelihood, will not be able to play next week due to some family matters going on. But this is a golden opportunity. If you have never played Classic Traveler before, please join in. It's a lot of fun, and it's very, very simple. It's just... Yes. It, it, it is if if you played original D&D original D&D is a complicated web of Byzantinian rules compared to traveler <laughs> um if bubba can play it anybody can play it just so <laughs> so uh we'll have to find out if i die as an npc next week uh Kyle will keep me posted uh, you know, am I strangely silent, as we say? Um, do I duck for cover with my battle cry of not in the face, not in the face? Just tune in. <laughs> Just tune in. Uh, tomorrow night, we'll be doing some more unboxing. And uh, I think we'll cement what we're going to deep dive and when we're going to deep dive at our next deep dive project, which I'm 99% sure is going to be uh, Ghost Tower of Inverness, and we'll have Alan Hammock in, but that will be a little bit down the road. So, um, Bubba, any comments, questions, criticisms? Uh, it was a lot of fun, as always. And uh, I'm curious to see who is going to step up and ride or die with Bubba next Wednesday. That's what I'm curious to see. Exactly. It's Bubba doing Traveler solo next week, guys. And do you, did, does anybody really want that? I don't think so. The planet of Gibson <laughs> will burn. <laughs> <laughs> you maniac! You blew it up! <laughs> I'm going to get back next week, and Kyle's just going to be, okay, roll up new characters. Wait, why? Why? What happened, Kyle? I'll have to go watch the video. But um, so thank Kyle, you. Again. Kyle's answer would just be Bubba. <laughs> so uh, we'll see you guys. I'll see you guys it's tomorrow because night. Of, see, it's because of you players like you, Tunker, in the role playing game aftermath, post apocalyptic, obviously, it has a little section on nuclear weapons and their effects. Um, and it goes in great detail, and then it finishes the section by saying, in any case, there is no reason for any role-playing game group to get their hands on more than one city buster during a campaign. <laughs> <laughs> and thought, more than one? Like, how about even one? <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's because of players like you. <laughs> <laughs> and players like you. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> so yeah, join us tomorrow and Friday night for more D and D talk, and then uh, some classic Gamma World. I'll be back Monday night. We'll see what we're going to do Monday night, and I will be back Tuesday night, and then there on for a while. I will have to step away, but fear not if you like the Traveler. We'll make arrangements. I'm not afraid to let Kyle drive solo at night. He's got his permit. <laughs> so you guys have a wonderful evening. Oh, I gotta I I have to I, I, I have to give thanks. I have to give thanks. I have to thank Joshua Garlock, Lord Corion, Ricky Maru, Mobius, Kevin Reynolds, Doomsword Deathmaster, Mark Simpson, Damian 247, James F. Keck, William Smith, the Dungeon Minister. Subscribe to Dungeon Minister on YouTube, please. Absolutely. Manny Wall, Mark Corey, Kevin Wood, Todd Sharp, Carnivore Farmer. I don't know why I'm doing the close encounters of the third kind hand gestures there. Anyway, uh, Rob knows I can't say that. You'll list Jeremy Rule, Boganora, Mikey Mank, Sky Hernstrom. Yes, that's Sky Hernstrom. 
and Pete Sullivan. You help keep the lights on, guys, and it means a hell of a lot to us. So thank you all very, very much for contributing, and uh, we'll see you next time. So y'all have a wonderful time. Peace. Bye, guys. <laughs>